Hi, this is Chen. A new generation of footballers are emerging around the world. The chapter of Messi and Ronaldo is coming to an end, and a new chapter of Mbappe and Haaland has begun. In particular, Mbappe has made a huge impact at the Qatar World Cup with eight goals under his name, taking the Golden Boot Award. Germany's leading sports magazine, Kicker, rated all of the players that played in the Qatar World Cup. And guess what? Mbappe came first, followed by Messi's second place. So today, we'll have a look at why Mbappe is a goat to be, and in particular, find out how he differs from other players in crucial moments of a football match. The advantage of a speed. Mbappe's speed is famous. Even my mom knows this. I don't even need to bother telling you that he's fast. But what does his speed bring to the table in a game of football? First, there was this instance where he scored a 30-yard screamer at the World Cup against Croatia. What was weird was that the Croatian defender was standing 4-5 to five yards away from Mbappe. As a defender, he should have gotten tight with Mbappe and prevented him from shooting. But instead, he gave so much space for Mbappe to shoot. Why did this happen? Because Mbappe's fast. So, the defender thought he'd get dribble past if he moved close to Mbappe. Another advantage that his pace brings is shown in this clip. In the game versus Poland at the World Cup, Mbappe was moving towards his ally fullback to receive the ball. But before he came to receive the ball, he gave a little dummy to run in behind and then moved towards the fullback. The defending fullback was so surprised and fell over because he thought Mbappe was running in behind. Although eventually the fullback got up and defended Mbappe in the follow-up play, it showed that Mbappe's speed is what allows him to easily trick defenders so that he can receive the ball in a much bigger space. One more effectiveness that his speed brings is that it increases the through pass success rate of his teammates. Do you see that moment in the Euro 2020? Mbappe passed the ball to Benzema, but the ball just deflected off of Benzema and it travelled so far up front. But guess what? Mbappe managed to catch the ball. That's recorded as a successful through pass by Benzema. Multiple tricks up the sleeve. Any team that faces France knows that Mbappe is the biggest threat to the team. So they always try to collectively defend against him, but Mbappe always manages to break through. How is this possible? His physical ability plays a big role, but there's a bigger factor, and it's the fact that he confuses his opponent by mixing his play. I'll give you an example. Mbappe puts the ball to his right and goes to shoot. In this situation, the defender needs to think about two different outcomes. Will he go for the far post, or will he go for the near post? Because he's good at executing both kicks. So, in a way, Mbappe forces the defender and the goalie to choose one of the outcomes, but it's actually quite meaningless. Why? Have a look here. His stance shows that he'll shoot to the far post. So when the goalie and the defender goes to block the far post, Mbappe changes the angle of his ankle and shoots towards the near post. The next time he's got the ball, he sees the defender and the goalie blocking the near post, in which case he aims for the far post. So from the opponent's perspective, they're bound to go crazy because they're always forced to a reverse motion. What's more astounding is the fact that Mbappe has more gimmicks other than this. For instance, when he puts the ball to his right, he sometimes gives a dummy and doesn't shoot. So as a defender, if you throw your body to block the shot and then turn back around to check, Mbappe isn't there anymore and you're just left for dead. Another gimmick is to give a little dummy and then run him behind the defense line after passing the ball to his teammate. Because Mbappe's acceleration is so fast, you can never defend against this one-two pass unless you already know that he's going to run him behind. But no defender can be aware of this because it happens so fast and also because Mbappe mixes up his aforementioned plays. He'll be gone like the wind with a one-two pass if you flinch even just a tiny bit. So as the defender, you need to be prepared for so many different outcomes and this is why they're bound to be afraid of Mbappe. Distance keeping. Mbappe's ability to score a setter is further improving by every match. In the Qatar World Cup, he scored two goals from a cross, and in both cases, he showed his characteristic movement, and that's to stay a yard or two away from his marker. So naturally, his position is slightly behind the defender when the cross comes in. And because he has more running space to accelerate, he can always take an advantage in his speed and height. And most importantly, he can make sure that he's always on side. Premier League's all-time top goal scorer Alan Shearer explains this ability in his punditry and specifically points out that it's an instinct that only world-class strikers have. Understanding of his teammate. There's one interesting thing about Mbappe's movement before a cross is put into the box. It's the fact that he moves differently depending on which player is delivering a cross. In his World Cup game against Poland, he was on the end of Griezmann's cross and scored a goal with his thigh. If you look closely, as soon as Mbappe sees Griezmann set up the ball for a cross, Mbappe moves like this. Why? Because he's aware that Griezmann will cross the ball quickly into the box. How does he know? Because he understands Griezmann's crossing style. This allows Mbappe to move into the right area at the right time and get away from his marker. In another game where France played Australia, when Dembele had the ball on the flank and hesitated whether to put the ball into the box or to skill the opponent up, Mbappe didn't prematurely take his attacking movements because once again, he fully understands Dembele's style of play. So instead, he moved after seeing the ball crossed into the box. So these two instances show that Mbappe changes the 
the timing of his penetrating movement depending on teammates' habits and style of play. So then, this raises the question, how is Mbappe so aware of his teammates' habits and style of play? Well, as this point tries to suggest, first of all, he's more sensitive than other players in catching out intricate details of his teammates. And second of all, he's played a lot of games with his teammates such as Griezmann, Dembele and Giroud, so they're bound to know each other very well. And I think this is why they're able to reach the World Cup Finals twice in a row. Detail trickery. Mbappe scored a ridiculous volley to equalise at the finals of the World Cup. What was more mind-boggling to me than the volley itself was this tiny little trickery before a shot. So the sequence of play started with Rabiot lobbing the ball to Mbappe like this. Mbappe touched the ball down for Turan and received the ball back from him to finish it off with a volley. Before receiving the ball from Rabiot, Mbappe actually stands like this and gives off the vibe that he's going to head the ball to Kamavinga who's behind him. And just as the ball comes, he changes his body shape and touches the ball down for Turan instead. In that moment, he twists his body so quickly and it's super satisfying to watch. This intricate detail tricks the Argentinian defender Molina to be drawn out of position. Molina shouldn't be blamed for this, he's a regular starter at Atletico Madrid, so he's a good defender. Instead, Mbappe should be the one to be praised for his little feint. It was just a beautiful movement. Magical first touch. There were two first touches that made you feel the grace of Mbappe in the World Cup game against Morocco. The first one was against his club teammate, Hakimi. The ball was passed to Mbappe like this, so Hakimi sneaked up from behind and tried to press Mbappe. But Mbappe touched the ball with the outside of his foot, turned and put in a through pass to Turan. The first touch was so clever. Because Hakimi's press was in this direction, if Mbappe's first touch was towards the goal, he probably would have gotten tackled. But because Mbappe checked Hakimi's pressing direction when receiving the ball, he directed his first touch away from Hakimi. Mbappe's movement following the first touch was so impressive because it was super smooth and natural. His first touch against Amrabat was brilliant as well. A ball was passed to Mbappe like this. Before taking his first touch, Mbappe calculated the ball's speed and direction and also Amrabat's positioning and pressing direction. So when he received the ball, he pretended to strike to the left and tricked Amrabat. But instead of dribbling to the left, he received the ball to his right and took his first touch behind Amrabat. And this movement aims to cause a big threat in the Moroccan defence line. And at the very least, it causes a lot of threats than a situation like this where Amrabat defends easily against Mbappe. Plus, Amrabat puts his hand up and gestures to say that he didn't touch Mbappe because they were inside the penalty box. So in short, Mbappe destroyed Amrabat with just one touch. After going past Amrabat, he faced four defenders but still dribbled without fear and took a quick shot as well. Although the shot was blocked, the deflection went in favour of France and they managed to score from it. Breaking up the dribble. Quality players break up the dribbling pattern. So in other words, each sequence of a dribble is quick and concise. A great example of this was showcased by Mbappe at the Champions League match, where he squeezed himself out of Militao and Vasquez defending and ended up scoring. It was literally a one-man show of Mbappe. When you look at this particular dribble in detail, he firstly sets the tempo of his dribble with the outside of his foot, then a quick step over with his right foot followed by a little shimmy to the left is finished off with a quick change of direction to dribble in between the two players. For non-pros like us, when we dribble, a quick change of direction is one movement. A better player can mix two movements into a dribble, so a little step over, then a quick stride to the left. But Mbappe breaks his dribbling pattern even more, and he does it time and time again, which becomes a nightmare for defenders. The art of winning free kicks. Neymar is good at winning fouls, but Mbappe is also very good. Mbappe by default always attempts to dribble even if there are three defenders in front of him. When Mbappe is in and around the box, he attempts even more challenging situations, but sometimes he would try to dribble from around this area and is in a situation where there's like four defenders swarming him and there's no teammates around. What does he do in this instance? He makes his opponent commit a foul against him by waiting for the opponent to push him from behind. He makes sure that he lets his body loose and falls over. Obviously the opponent who committed the foul wouldn't be happy because he didn't even push that hard, but from the referee's perspective, a player has fallen over due to an external force, so it is a pushing foul. It's amazing how Mbappe uses the situation to his advantage, and for good reasons, it's his best option. His team gets to keep possession of the ball and wins a free kick in a pretty dangerous area. Strong mentality. The biggest reason that I think Mbappe will become a GOAT is because of his mentality. On top of all the points I mentioned earlier, his strong mentality is like a cherry on top. I feel as though his mentality is never really shaken, even in crucial moments. He was composed and strong in Champions League games and in the World Cup final too. In particular to the World Cup, when Argentina was dominating the game and France were losing 2-0, he single-handedly evened the game out by scoring two goals. He looked so strong and I was seeing Zidane of the past. In one of Mbappe's interviews, he was asked on how he handles pressure and he answered that it's the life that he wanted and that he loves pressure. He also added 
decided that he wishes to become the best player in the world and that he thinks he's on the right track. Strong mentality, right? There's a football psychologist called Gare Jourdet. I hope I got his name right. He analyzed the World Cup finals and Mbappe's penalties. Throughout Jourdet's studies, he discovered that as a footballer with a higher price tag and a bigger reputation, the pressure becomes much larger when taking penalties. So the penalty performance level decreases as you become more expensive. In the finals, when Mbappe was preparing to take the first penalty, Marcus Acuna tried to scuff the grass where Mbappe was supposed to plant his foot. This was clearly intended to distract Mbappe. Mbappe knew Acuna's intention, so he calmed himself down and put his foot next to the spot and waited for the ref to blow his whistle. In the 118th minute, another penalty was awarded to France and Mbappe took the penalty. This time round, the pressure was even bigger because France were a goal down. It was literally the last big chance to equalise and the game would essentially be over if he misses. Because of the circumstances, Argentinian players distracted Mbappe even more aggressively. Once again, he ignored the distraction and calmed himself down to finish off the penalty beautifully. In the penalty shootout, Mbappe took the most important role by taking the first kick. He took a clean shot and was so calm for the third time that evening. Normally in a penalty shootout, you can kind of sense that a player is going to miss when you see their faces before they take the shot. But Mbappe looked good and he looked super confident. I mean, he's got to be confident because, well, look, how can you not be confident with that? One more thought I had is that Mbappe is so mature. He was the first one to console Kingsley Coman and Tremaini when they missed their penalties. He probably knew how it felt to miss penalties in a penalty shootout because in the Euro 2020, he missed his penalty and France lost the game to Switzerland. At the time, Mbappe received so much hate and some people even left racially abusive comments on his social media accounts. After the incident, he overcame all of the pressure and scored in all three penalty kicks at this World Cup. Commenting on this actually makes me realise that his mental recovery is also very, very good. Anyways, France did eventually lose at the finals, but I think is really good at muting unnecessary comments as well. A video of Emi Martinez taking the piss out of Mbappe has gone viral after the World Cup. So Mbappe was questioned on it in his interview. He said, the celebrations are not my problem. I don't waste my energy on such futile things. So cool and calm, isn't it? He just focuses on what's in front of him. I think Mbappe has a genuine love for football and he just loves playing football like a child. I saw the footballing happiness in his face at this World Cup when Harry Kane misses his penalty. Just have a look at his face. It's the kind of happiness you get as a teenager when you take the piss out of your teammates while playing football at the park, you know? You don't get to see those kind of faces at the pro level that much. So today, we had a look at why Mbappe is a goat to be. Haaland is also on fire this season, but I personally think that Mbappe influences the game a little bit more because he does more than just score goals. I find it quite unfortunate that he sometimes gets a little bit devalued because he plays in Ligue 1, but he proved himself once again at the World Cup and he proves his worth every time he plays in the Champions League too. He scored 12 goals at the World Cup so far and he's still 24. The all-time top goal scorer at the World Cup is closer with 16 goals, so I think Mbappe is on course to beat Close's record. Can Mbappe exceed his career beyond the world class level and become the greatest player of all time? I don't know about you, but for sure, I'll keep watching with a lot of joy. Anyways, that's it for today and I'll see you in my next video. Cheers and peace!